So now our valve guide installation is complete. Next on the agenda is to cut the valve seats. Hi and welcome to Classic ATS. During this eight part series, we're gonna show you how to fully build your 911 air-cooled cylinder head. Before we can cut the valve seats, we need to measure using a new valve, the installed height of the valve. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my valve installed on the cylinder head, I'm just holding it up with my finger. I'm gonna take my measurement from the top of the valve down to the cylinder head. The specification on this measurement is 47.5 millimeters with a tolerance of plus 0.6 of a millimeter. Now every time the valve seat is cut, this allows the valve to move further up and up and up. If the valve seat has been cut too many times already and this dimension exceeds 48.1 millimeters, then we need to replace the actual hardened seat in the cylinder head. The other thing that I want to see before I spend time cutting the valve seat is how close to that tolerance we are already. Now this valve measured 47.55, so there is plenty of room to redress the seats. But if we find a cylinder head that is at say 48, then there is no point cutting those valve seats until the seat is replaced because you only have 0.1 of a millimeter to play with. So on this cylinder head we have 48.7 millimeters on the installed height. So this one is outside of the tolerance and the seat which is in the cylinder head itself will need to be replaced. So this is our hardened seat right here and by the looks of it this one looks like it may have been sunk too deep to begin with. So limited range of cutting. So for cutting the valve seat, we are going to be using the New Way seat cutters. These are a carbide seat cutters that are manually driven. Now there's lots of different options out there for cutting seats. If we were in a purely engine machine shop environment, we would most likely be using a purpose-built uh, head and seat machine that uses a three angle cutter that is already built in all the different angles. There are grinding stone options as well as different types of carbide options. So we're going to be doing a three angle seat. The angles are controlled by the actual cutter itself. So we can see here I've got two different cutters that I'm holding. Most of the new way cutters will have two angles on each. So a three angle valve job will mean usually that we have a 30 degree approach angle on the valve, then a 45 degree seat angle where the valve is actually going to contact, and then our 60 degree or up to 75 degree exit angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a thin coat of Dichem Blue. What this is going to do is it's going to give us a nice ink marking of the seat so we can see exactly what we are cutting and the results of our cuts. So I just applied that with a little cotton ball. Next, I'm going to go ahead and install our pilot. The pilot is a tapered piece of tool steel at the bottom. This one is a 9 millimeter pilot so that means it'll go from about 8.98 millimeters down here to around 9.01 millimeters. The pilot needs to be a tight fit so we're going to slide it in and then we're going to push down on it until it locks and it should be nice and tight in the valve guide. So the first cutter that I like to use now I've got my pilot installed is I like to use the 15 degree flattening taper first. What this will do is it will actually close the seat down. When the valve wears into the seat and the guide wears it will cause the seat to change angles. Also because we've put new valve guides in the angles may not be a hundred percent where they were to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and just carefully slide that down. I've already adjusted the carbide cutters so that they are not going to interfere with the actual cylinder head. They are just going to cut the valve seat itself. So I'm going to use the hand crank and I'm just going to be moving in a clockwise rotation.
And if you take a look at the seat, you can see how one side is smaller than the other. This is because the seat is not 100% concentric to the actual valve guide. This is normal when you have replaced the valve guide inserts. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these a little bit further. We just want to flatten this out. So the next angle I'm going to cut is my 60 degree angle. So I'm just going to bring that in and this is going to finish squaring up the seat. We want to cut as little as necessary on this. to go a little bit more. Once I've got the seat is all squared up, next I'm going to re-blue it again so I can see what my cuts are doing and we're going to go ahead and make our 30 and 45 degree cuts. So now I'm going to cut my 30 degree angle. Now we are ready to do our 45 degree angle. Now the 45 degree angle needs to be a specific width. It needs to, on the intake, be 1.25 millimeters with a tolerance of plus 0.1. So it can't be smaller than 1.25 millimeters and no bigger than 1.35 millimeters. So I want to go nice and slow when I'm cutting this one. I don't want to make it too big too fast. So I'm just probably going to do maybe three or four revolutions. and take a look at our seat. And I think I'm actually going to re-blue it. It's going to be easier to take a measurement. So I'm just going to grab our die cam. Otherwise all the seat angles tend to just blur into one. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my calipers, and my calipers are set to 1.27 right now, so I can get an idea of the seat width, and we are right on 1.27 millimeters. So now we've got the valve seat cut and it's concentric. We need to check where it's going to seat on the valve. We want the seating portion to be as close to the center of the valve face as possible. If the valve seat is too far up towards the end here, then the valve isn't going to always seat properly. And if the valve seat is too far down towards the inboard portion of the valve, the valve is going to be sticking up higher than it should do. So to do this, I'm going to use a little bit of Prussian blue, and I'm just going to use a small acid brush and apply that to the valve itself. So I'm just going to paint that on and a little is good. You don't need to be swimming in this stuff. Just enough so we can take a nice imprint of the pattern. So I'm going to put my finger on the bottom of the valve guide so I can catch the valve. And then all I'm going to do is press the valve down. Now I don't want to twist it. I just want to lift the valve up and as carefully as I can without influencing the Prussian blue, I want to be able to pick it up and look at where the seat is. If you look at the valve, we have a nice clean seat line that goes all the way around the valve and we can still see that there is part of the valve uh, ceiling surface on either side. So this is right in the middle of the valve. It's exactly where we want it to be. So the last thing we need to do on this seat is put our valve back in 
and we're going to go ahead and remeasure our installed height. Because we've taken material off of the valve seat, that's going to change the position of the valve. So we want to make sure that we haven't exceeded our 47.5 plus 0.6 of a millimeters. And this one's come in at 47.87 millimeters. Let's make sure we're straight. 47.87. So this one is complete and usable. So now our intake is done. I'm going to cut our exhaust. So first thing I'm going to do is apply some die cam to it so I can see. Then I'm going to go ahead and install our pilot. I have several different pilots that are within 0 0.01 of a millimeter of each other. So sometimes if a pilot is a little bit tight going into the hole, I'll use one side either side of it. So the procedure is going to be the same. We're going to take our closing cut on the back first. So that's going to square up the top of the seat and also close the seat down. Then I'm going to come in with my 60 degrees. And I have a little bit more to cut on this one just to square it up. And lastly, I'm going to come in with our 30 degree angle and just go ahead and cut that. Before I cut my 45, I'm going to apply a little more die cam just so I can see and make it easier to measure. Now the exhaust seat is 1.5 plus 0.1 of a millimeter. It needs to be a little bit wider than the intake seat and that is to help it disperse heat into the cylinder head. If the seat is too thin on the exhaust side and it can't allow the heat transfer from the valve into the cylinder head to help cool it, it will result in a burnt valve. So you want to make sure that the exhaust valve seat is that wider seat. So the procedure is going to be the same. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and my seat is 1.61 millimeters wide, so we're right there on the size. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the correct pattern on the valve. So I'm going to have the same procedure, I'm just going to use some Prussian blue. And just want to make sure you don't have any gaps in this, but it doesn't need to be a lot. Just going to make sure we don't have any metal shavings. Same thing, I'm going to support the valve on the back with my finger on the guide. Go ahead and push it down. Then we want to pick it up and take a look at our positioning. And this one also looks good. It's a little bit closer to the edge of the valve, but we still have a very definite um, area where it is not encroaching off the edge of the valve. Now, if you make a mistake and make the valve seat too big, the way that you would fix that is you would come back with your 30 degree angle and close the seat from the top down the way that you would move the pattern on the valve. So if we had measured this and let's say we were all the way off the edge of our valve. If I needed to move the valve seat from out here to more in the center where we are at, then I would cut down from the top of the valve with my 30 degree angle. That closes the seat and then I would machine it open a little bigger to increase the width to meet my width specifications. 
if the pattern had landed right down here on the um, bottom edge of the ceiling surface then I would open that up using my 60 degree angle and then recut my valve seat to match specifications and re-blue it. So the last thing we have to do on this cylinder head is check our installed height and this one is measuring 47.98 which is within the specification so this head is now uh, ready to go off and be cleaned and ready for the next process.